Muy buenos días. A nombre del Instituto de Directores. Half of the Institute of Directors, EY, and uh, Santiago Stock Exchange, let me welcome you to the third session of the launching of Chapter Zero Chile. Aiming at uh, diving deeper into responsibility of corporate governance on climate uh, change and its uh, environmental impact, social impact, economic impact. Should be noted that this uh, session is part of the agenda of the Global Summit 2021 hosted by the World Economic Forum. So uh, this is uh, being broadcasted to Chile and the world with uh, uh, and that this session will be translated uh, into English. In order to address challenges and opportunities of climate governance, uh, we have today a panel, a multi-sectoral panel. And before introducing this panel, I would like to ask you to send your questions uh, over the WhatsApp number. You will see on the screen right now your questions will be considered so that we can address them during the conversation. We will be holding with this uh, uh, each one of the speakers. So let me first introduce uh, Macarena Navarreta. Welcome. She's a lawyer, Universidad de Chile, over 25 years of experience. Uh, she's been working with the EY. She joined uh, in 1998 in the tax consulting, and she was uh, promoted as a partner in 2016. 2018, she's a uh, country manager in Chile uh, as a uh, being the first women uh, holding these uh, positions. She leads the executive committee of EY. She's the council of uh, the Latina Sur Committee in EY. She's also part of the board of the uh, Chilean American uh, Chamber of Trade, ICADE, and Chapter Zero Chile. She has been selected for six times as the 100 uh, leading women in Chile. Welcome, Macarena. Thank you, Fadua. It's a pleasure. Claudio Muñoz, welcome. He's the chairperson of Aguas Andina, a civil industrial engineer from Universidad de Chile, past president of ICADE, and uh, corporate director. For over 20 years, he's been with the Telefonica Group, where he has been the chairperson and CEO uh, from uh, 2010 to 2018. He's the director of Institute of Directors, uh, the uh, Protectora del Infancia Foundation, chairperson of the Digital Transformation uh, Center, Universidad de Desarrollo, and chairperson of Chapter Zero Chile. Welcome, Claudio. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Fado, for the invitation. My pleasure. Paolo Palotti. Paolo is graduate from uh, Tecli Study di Ancona. He's an electronic engineer. He joined Enel in 1990 as, uh, with an important role in different reorganization processes in the corporation in February 2018. He uh, moved to Chile and is a uh, control and finances director for uh, Enel Americas until 2018. And since then, uh, he's been the CEO of uh, Enel Chile. Was, uh, help pushing the energy transition in the country has led the decarbonization of NL mix and with an investment plan in uh, renewable generation and promoting uh, the electricity lines in Chile. So welcome, it's a pleasure being with you today. Your microphone is off, uh, Paolo. Hi, Fado, it's a pleasure for me too. Let me, uh, greetings for all of you. Francisco Ruiz Tagle, you began with CMPC in 1991. You've been the uh, uh, general general manager of Celulosa del Pacifico and general manager of the Papelera in Argentina. In 2011 to 18, you led uh, CMPC Forestal and CMPC Celulosa. In August 2018, you were appointed as the CEO of CMPC. You have a commercial engineer from Universidad, uh, uh, a business administrator from Uni Universidad de Chile. You have an MBA, University of California at LA, and you're a member of a World Business Council and a member of SOFOFA and ICARE director. So welcome, Francisco. 
Uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you, Afadwa, for the invitation. Last but not least, uh, we have uh, René Muga. René, you are a business administrator from uh, Catholic University with a vast uh, background in, the, in the, the different businesses before joining Anglo-America in 2019. You were ex a CEO of Barrick, uh, um, BP, uh, headed out as the Chile General Manager of CPC and VP Corporate Affairs of uh, LAN. You have experience in international economics, you were Director of Economic Affairs in uh, London, you were, all, you were also CEO Summit in uh, APEC and uh, APEC Business Advisory Co Council. Welcome, René. It's a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you for the invitation. Good morning. Okay, I've made all the introductions of these uh, great uh, uh, panel. I'd like to thank you. For me, it's an honor to be here with you, especially because probably the challenge I have for this panel has to do with the need to discuss among various industries. In climate, we know that uh, the role of the board is key as to how we put in the agenda uh, that, that we take to the board boardroom, but also how we build synergies in the different areas that you're working with. And I would like to start with the first question. In our country, uh, our country is highly vulnerable to climate change and we believe that Chile, in terms of uh, environmental losses or social and economic losses, this uh, could be really significant. In fact, it is uh, believed that by, 20, uh, by uh, 2100, we could have uh, a 1.1% annual loss of the GDP because uh, water resources will be affected by climate change. And I would like to start with you, Claudio. What are the measures you are adopt uh, adopting in terms of adaptation? Uh, what is to be pushed today to drive as a, as a chairperson of uh, Aguas Andinas? Thank you, Fadua, for your question. Really, it allows me to try to understand the problem we face. Many times we discuss uh, climate change, but it's difficult to size what's the impact in Chile. Besides the economic impact, which you mentioned that, unfortunately, it's a reality. I believe that we have to understand that Chile today is leading, is among the most affected countries of, uh, by climate change. We are, uh, we are number 18 in the world uh, ranking. We are leading in many rankings. And unfortunately, we are leading among the most affected countries by climate change. So if we, if we go to the water world, that means not only droughts, but a, a change in the climate. And uh, let me put that into numbers. Uh, rainfall in the Santiago region, we've been reading that since, uh, from, uh, since 1924 in a station at the Quinta Normal area. When we look at that series, the data series, well, the last decade of that, the decade of that uh, series is the driest decade. Uh, that we're facing the last, the, the driest 10 years of the last 200 years. And so what we have to do here, we have to understand that rather than um, a drought, we have a change in climate. We will have shorter winters on a regular basis, uh, hotter uh, uh, summers, rain where we used to have uh, uh, snow, uh, thawing, but, and, 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 and what we lived in, in uh, last January, the atmospheric river where we have the most intense rainfall in, the ja in January in the metropolitan region. So what we have to do facing this challenge. Of course, we have to adapt and we have to change. Probably we'll be discussing this, but I would, I would like to say that there are three transformation levers. The first is investment. Businesses, boards, we have to drive investment to adapt ourselves to climate change. The other one is uh, 
circular economy approach. We have to put in our strategy how we change our business processes, how we change our business models so that we have zero impact. And, and, and this is a great opportunity for innovation, uh, re-engineering, transformation. And the third lever that has to do with how we work together. And that's why I like this uh, panel, because it, it, it represents one of the levers we have to drive from, our, from the boardroom. How do we work together? How do we build uh, an alliance to face this challenge called climate change? Really interesting, these uh, three levers, not only thinking of uh, water, but also it, this cuts across uh, the whole spectrum. Paolo, energy, uh, this is something, uh, it's moving, it's all, uh, it, you're massive adding uh, uh, renewables. Do you believe this is enough in order to, to develop a, a, a f uh, emission free energy sector, energy industry? Probably that's an important point uh, because if we look this at the global level, we see that there is a trend, a strong trend today. Everything is focused on renewables. There are uh, companies leading the, the process and there are companies that uh, used to be the leaders in the energy sector, particularly oil and gas, that are now trying to uh, adopting these uh, deep conversion using renewables. So clearly, renewables is it's a reality. And But the question, are them enough? Are renewables enough for us to drive this change? Probably that's a driving force, but not the only one. Look at Chile. Chile has r amazing renewable uh, resources, but it's quite vulnerable, as you've said. So what we need here, it's an effort to lower, the, the, to, 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 to disseminate this benefit of uh, renewables down to customers, so to, uh, to clean the cities, having the ability to uh, act in a sustainable manner, and of course, uh, drive this concept of circular economy. Econ circular economy is like uh, energy efficiency. There are clear numbers uh, saying that uh, with an, uh, an important impact of circular economy, you can uh, save in CO2 emissions. So that is something that is important to work on. This is something that's being addressed uh, among various uh, industries and sectors. A set of industries can drive this clearly. All these requires infrastructure, uh, infrastructure for the trans transport of energy, infrastructure to reach customers uh, with the new services, with uh, a better quality of services. So this whole set is a uh, work. It's, uh, it's a commitment, it's a challenge for the energy industry, but not only for us that you can uh, you can help us achieve uh, these goals. Innovation, you have sustainability, which is very strong. Uh, we have this uh, concept of circular economy that may uh, push this very strongly. Chile here uh, can uh, work a lot, can grow a lot with this. Thank you. Anyone would like to uh, supplement uh, those comments? Maybe there, Rene, when we talk about mining, you always say, sure, mining emissions, but there is a big challenge now that has to do with how you're adding or you're working on, on a circular economy, but also along with your vendors and suppliers, which we know it's a great uh, task in order to decrease uh, emissions by uh, for the whole industry. Uh, the work uh, 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 that, that you are extending, you're expanding to your vendors and suppliers. What are the challenges that you, do, you face today? Clearly, with Anglo American, we have a purpose, which is reimagining mining to improve the life of uh, people. This is not only us, but the whole value chain. Mining is changing today, it's becoming 
a, uh, an industry where we used to uh, B2B, but now we're becoming a B2C because consumers are now demanding products with a greater traceability. As we said, sustainability for instance, so the effort, it's not something, an effort you do as a, as a, as a company. And, and in Anglo-American, we have a, a well-developed plan, which we call sustainable mining plan, setting goals in line with the sustainable uh, development goals of the UN with metrics to see how we progress in areas such as governance and becoming a, a reliable and dependable uh, business. We use less water. How do we uh, grow into carbon neutrality? And in social affairs, how, how we uh, change the way we do business uh, with our surrounding communities. And all those metrics, of course, the addition of the, the whole value chain is key. Uh, the work uh, with, uh, with our vendors and suppliers is having uh, a, a growing impact and importance. What we do today in many areas, electromobility, for instance, I think we, we have a we have electric buses uh, to uh, for our for our personnel this is an initiative which is within the framework of sustainability goals but also in alliance with the bus manufacturers uh, and then, well paolo is here and uh, with uh, the company operating the buses and of course we are trying to to grow in our sustainability goals but together because that's the only way to do and mining we know this together with our associated uh, businesses and, 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 and vendors and suppliers, because that's the only way to achieve a consistent and sustainable growth. So with these additions, uh, Rene, you've talked about investment, circular economy, working together, infrastructure, this uh, change, this reconversion of the industry. Macarena, how do you believe Chile can uh, uh, can stand out today as a leading country in sustainable development? What's the challenge? You you work with different industries and different customers in EY, right? Thank you, Fadwa. I believe Chile has to leverage its natural advantages uh, to be a leaders in sustainable development. We have northern Chile one of the cleanest uh, skies in the world with abundant uh, solar radiation. We have, uh, we have uh, regions with strong winds and, 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 and in, in the southern Chile with a huge potential for, for, for a clean production of clean energies. Of course, we need the authorities and, 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 and companies to, to bet on the sustainable transformation. And uh, for adopting this role, this key role, I believe uh, in, in we, we are in the right on the right track. Uh, we have an energy uh, policy for the long term, and I believe there are certain initiatives which are worth noting. The this uh, reaching this as uh, seventy percent clean energies by twenty thirty. We're setting very demanding goals in terms of the responsibility of the producer and recycling. I was, I was looking at the the renewal, the rekai or uh, uh, renewable energy. At uh, Chile was ranked uh, number eleven uh, uh, only after uh, bigger countries in terms of um, clean energies and the size of the market also matters. So I believe uh, we are on the right uh, track. The uh, corporate area, more and more businesses are uh, taking this uh, environmental responsibility. They are setting uh, carbon reduction goals and uh, progress is being made. We have to acknowledge that the progress is being made, but also current commitments are not enough. And uh, a key issue here, I believe, is innovation and research, the development in those areas so that the new energy sources are good alternatives uh, for or, 
or for, for businesses to see how technology development turned solar energy from something that was extremely expensive in an option that today is much more efficient at competitive prices. So we have to focus on investment and, and, and innovation. We have to speed it up. We have to boost it because we have all the opportunities available and those opportunities are to be used. Thank you, Macarena. And I'd like to uh, use that answer you gave us in terms of uh, R&D and innovation. And Francisco, to ask you, uh, how are you fostering R&D initiatives and innovation initiatives that uh, create uh, environmental, social, and economic value in everything having to do with our native forests? I'd like to give you that question because I believe there's a huge challenge uh, in those terms in this in southern Chile. Thank you, Fadwa. Maybe uh, I'd like to start by uh, mentioning the importance of uh, afforestation in, in this uh, in, in terms of low emissions. And just to tell you that uh, the challenge is uh, huge and I believe uh, afforestation uh, needs to be understood as a supplement to uh, lower emissions. I don't, I don't mean to say that capturing emissions uh, should not prevent us from doing other efforts, but I'd like to communicate uh, very strongly that this plays a very relevant role, uh, the, the role of the forests. And in those terms, we, uh, as a company, we have established uh, uh, very concrete uh, goals uh, uh, in line with the reducing, uh, according to the Paris Agreement, in terms of reducing uh, two degrees uh, compared to the pre-industrial era based on a methodological framework, which is called science made targets, uh, setting up uh, sustainability and environmental objectives. Uh, now, in, in terms of the industry, uh, we have set out to reduce uh, in the next uh, nine years until 2030 to reduce uh, uh, emissions by 50%. That means uh, investment and adaptation, as Claudio said at the beginning, in terms of streamlining a number of processes uh, related to emissions. So on the industrial side, emissions or uh, water consumption reduction, that is uh, coupled with a significant role played by innovation, uh, by introducing circular economy, as we have heard. Um, in, in our case, we are developing a series of projects related to uh, reuse of byproducts coming from our own processes in order to uh, become an even more circular industry. So we have a significant role to play and we're working uh, hard on making investment on, on many of those aspects. Uh, I'd, I'd say also that in terms of forestry itself, we must understand uh, that this industry uh, requires lots of uh, research. Today in Chile, we have approximately 15 million hectares of native forest, and that native forest plays a significant role besides forestry plantations uh, in relation to emissions capture. We have worked um, hard uh, doing R&D in terms of conservation, we have uh, 150,000 hectares that are focused on conservation. These are areas where we have uh, developed the projects uh, that entail uh, monitoring uh, uh, endangered uh, species like fauna, our wemu, for example, uh, or tolomiro, wirlo, and other uh, birds that are at the brink of extinction. So we have established alliances with uh, specialized uh, NGOs and organizations working on um, uh, research and innovation and conservation projects. Maybe uh, there's poor understanding, and I should mention this in terms of ex in terms of how expanding the forestry industry has to do with planting more trees behind us. Uh, there's a lot of uh, R and D which has to do with planting better trees. Um, uh, in that sense. Uh, 
I think uh, uh, we're choosing better plans, uh, uh, something that uh, adapts better to uh, drought, to climate change, and the recovery of species. That, uh, well, clearly, that is something that not only has to do with the quantity of things that are being done, but the quality of the things that are being done and the research that is being conducted. Claudio, uh, there are some figures telling us that no matter what, there will be a temperature increase and in, increase in evaporation. And in that sense, I'd like to ask you, um, what is the baseline of the agenda of this uh, board in which the major problem is the scarcity of the resources and such a vital resource, which is water. How um, uh, are you considering in your agenda the connection with this intersectoral uh, resource? It is a resource that uh, cuts across all industries. How are you handling this? What are you doing? Uh, Yes, Fadua, um, uh, climate change in very specific terms, in terms of water availability, means something simple. There's less water available. Santiago, for example, we were used to seeing our mountain range covered with the snow cap for a long period until spring. That was our water reserve, if you wish. So we had the cycles. Uh, because of the snowing and thawing used to mm, supply us with water. That changed uh, forever. So what are we doing now? Uh, the first lever I said, investment. What well, this means that uh, from Aguas Andinas uh, board of directors, we have uh, fostered a uh, $150 million agenda on investment in terms of building the mega tanks in uh, Pirque. That is a concrete response to climate change. We were not used uh, to face uh, turbidity in Maipo River in summer or in spring. And simply put, a turbid uh, river means that uh, that uh, drinking water plants cannot operate. So these mega tanks in Pirke are investments that are giving us some resilience. They allow us to face uh, one of the consequences that climate change has. That's not all. Uh, more than $500 million uh, will be invested next uh, in the next five years, including uh, uh, deep water wells. Uh, we are drilling uh, more than 150 meters deep in order to find water in the aquifers. Uh, in order, of course, uh, not affecting the aquifers, uh, by basically to supply the southern part of Santiago. We are reinforcing our production facilities, and that's a significant investment in order to uh, giving um, them more resilience. Uh, of course, we are investing on efficiency in our networks. We have 13,000 kilometers of networks for, to supply uh, water, so the investment required uh, to, in order to support those networks is, is relevant. Regarding circular economy, I believe this allows us to address your question directly, Fava. Uh, fortunately, at Aguas Andinas, applying the circular economy approach meant not only to supply drinking water, we are doing, we, we are treating uh, sewage water, so we are giving new life to water. Uh, the history of our cities in our country meant that uh, sewage water was just discharged into rivers. That is to say, we used to pollute our rivers. Uh, Chile has to be uh, very proud because that is not happening anymore. A hundred percent of sewage waters from our city uh, are retreated, uh, treated and regenerated, and they are poured back into the water streams at agricultural quality. Uh, we have uh, eliminated the problem of that contamination. This gives us an, a, a new approach to address the water issue, which is reusing water. Culturally, we are going to have to get used of water uh, to be always a scarce resource. So what's left in this circular uh, logic or adapt of adapting is how we can reuse water. And that possibility, fortunately, is possible in our region. 
because we because we're treating 100% of the waters, we are putting them back uh, to uh, river streams and uh, streams uh, that uh, gives us another lever to reuse that water in the irrigation of gardens, industrial use, irrigating parks, and that increases the water supply. Therefore, uh, of course, coupled with the investment that we require, we are able to address um, the climate change that is impacting us. I'd like to remind all our viewers at the top, you will see a WhatsApp number where you can send your questions. In this purpose of understanding that there's a cultural challenge as well for our country, for each one of us, but there's also a challenge uh, to you, Paolo, for, for example, how are you addressing that transformation um, inside your own company? So how you believe you will be able to align this purpose with your own purposes in your company, uh, with your collaborators, and how are you uh, transforming that in, inside your own companies? Excuse me, Falwa, I, I had a bit, a bit interruption. Uh, please, if you could repeat, because I my signal was, my audio signal was interrupted. Uh, I was asking Paolo, uh, Claudio talked about the cultural transformation that is uh, how to reuse water, uh, our capability of uh, changing the purpose of what we are doing that so that there is a transformation in our own uh, companies. So the question is, how are you uh, doing this in-house, this transformation? Well, clearly, it's uh, an important transformation uh, because that means uh, involving the board of directors. Uh, for example, last year, uh, decarbonization of the energy mix, $2.4 billion investment in a matter of years. So that means an important debate because it also means a, a direct involvement of the board uh, in these uh, challenges. Everything this is supported at the board level in, regarding the purpose of our company. The purpose is to open up energy for a more prosperous future and to empower through sustainable development. Uh, that means that each one of us has a clear idea of what the goal is, the goal that we need to achieve. And it also means that each one of us understands uh, our own role one of them is decarbonization. We are going to shut down all our uh, coal-fired uh, units by May 2022. Uh, only one will be left. Uh, that uh, We have that development, which is a challenge, uh, 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 an even bigger uh, challenge, considering the year of COVID uh, that we experienced in 2020 in order to build and start up uh, 2,400 megawatts of both solar and wind. So this means um, some conviction uh, within the company and also a cultural change, a mindset change and with innovative tools. If you think uh, about the uh, uh, distribution network in Santiago, which is a grid that serves 2 million customers, that means to, uh, to actually increase investment on that grid in order to improve the service and to provide new services that uh, allow for the electrification and the use uh, of the, that electric power by the end customer. This is also a challenge that is extremely important because in the end, producing renewable energy uh, needs to reach uh, the end customer. Uh, uh, digitizing the network to innovate uh, the network and the uh, services to end customers is something that is uh, needs uh, um, fostering as well as providing a new uh, 
set of services to a customer uh, involving the authorities, the governments, and also the private world, uh, developing uh, innovation and the enthusiasm about doing things. And now uh, we have a plan uh, to set up uh, electric charges throughout the country. This is a mechanism that always helps to clean uh, the energy consumption mix and in order to achieve the zero emissions world. That's the task, but we need to do it jointly. Uh, each industry needs to interact with others in order to clearly uh, start up the sustainability concept, uh, the circular economy concept, which clearly means uh, uh, capacity to uh, limit uh, the uh, emission. So this is a very fine-tuned machine, but this works quite well when uh, the members of the board, uh, uh, the C-suite of companies are convinced about what's needed. Thank you, Paolo. And in that sense, Francisco, if you could please uh, comment in the forestry sector, for example, uh, how the climate change is affecting and what opportunities do you see in, in terms of infrastructure, uh, infrastructure that needs to be modern, that allows uh, for adaptation to climate change? Uh, what opportunities or challenges you see today uh, in the sector? I'd like to start by saying that one of the most relevant changes uh, that I believe Claudio mentioned it before uh, is a cultural change. Uh, I think that is a effort that we're doing as an industry uh, in order to become aligned with uh, global objectives. Uh, but I believe uh, this is a very relevant uh, matter, but this is a scientific effort in the world coming from NGOs and global companies uh, to to have information that is uh, comparable, technical, objective, and transparent. Uh, to look at our baselines and to see where we would like to go. Uh, we have worked uh, on a roadmap for the first industry with the World Business Council. Uh, actually, well, we did a presentation uh, to United Nations in 2019 in order to align ourselves with the um, Millennium uh, Goals. That's relevant work. Um, in terms of goals, uh, in, 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 this, in terms of this change, this approach to uh, what the global uh, climate change means, uh, these are uh, goals in terms of reducing emissions. Um, that also has to do with relevant uh, changes. Um, th things that are, we're working on, uh, uh, we have processes based on, on fossil fuels in some factories. Uh, by 2025, we're thinking of changing or reducing them and to actually uh, to go to renewables or, uh, or, or to actually put some of this uh, uh, byproducts uh, into that circular economy. In terms of water, uh, we use water in our processes to, to a significant extent. Uh, for example, in Bio, Bio uh, we have facilities there uh, and we have investment projects uh, that uh, uh, are intended to reduce water consumptions, uh, to put them in, in line with the best standards. We have um, projects in Brazil and in Chile, which I believe are aimed at uh, best practices, but we also have, we still have uh, relevant challenges. At the same time, I would also mention the fact that uh, in terms of uh, the forestry, uh, the, the impacts of uh, climate change on biodiversity are always uh, challenging us in, in, in terms of improving our practices and finding new practices in terms of silviculture. So, so how to operate the forest that we have extremely uh, stringent uh, certifications 
best uh, or most stringent certifications in the world in terms of sustainability uh, and the environment. But um, since the goal is reducing this two degrees globally, I believe the, the pace at which we're going is still slow and we need to um, do even more uh, compared to what we're doing. Uh, I would mention that. Uh, I believe um, that's, that's what I would like to say now. Thank you, Macarena. And uh, on the effect of new consumers, this is something that has been touched upon. Do you believe that the companies today are driving an, an, an agenda on sustainability? What practices have you seen on on, on our clients in, 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 in the different uh, industries and areas. So what's the challenge today? See, consumers uh, now and the civil society are more and more uh, uh, demanding from brands, from companies, cert some sort of commitment in terms of uh, sustainability. These uh, uh, push, this drive force, is that more and more people in their daily shoppings, that they uh, try to find uh, environment-friendly products. People are willing to pay more for that. Sustainability, after all, has become for companies in, in a part of the need to add value over the long term. All companies today should be concerned with being sustainable. Otherwise, consumers will penalize them. What we see at uh, EY Chile, we see that concern uh, from our uh, uh, clients in terms of sustainability. But energy and mining, for instance, uh, new energy sources are needed. But the, the shorter term risks will take the lead. This is understandable considering the impact of the pandemic and the social crisis. I would say that globally this is the same when we look at the E-wide risk disclosure parameters, that's uh, June last year. Um, it provides uh, a recommendation on financial dissemination on the environment. Um, and it allows us to conclude that even though the environmental issues are becoming more and more important, organizations do not have a clear understanding of the scope and the size of financial impacts of uh, climate change. And, and this is, again, natural. These are complex. These are, are long-term, even longer-term and more complex, more challenging than most traditional commercial risks. So, um, in order to understand these challenges and, 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 and risks, it's important to consider the uh, ES, 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 ESG criteria. And that's why it is important to see what uh, CMF did uh, this week. Now, we'll open a public consultation on those standards, including sustainability and corporate governance in the annual report of trying to improve, enhance, modernize the information by adding these ESG on a comprehensive matter. And this will allow us to learn among uh, companies and businesses, the corporate governance structure, the strategy uh, uh, implemented to achieve these goals, and how uh, these risks are being financially managed, which are relevant, of course. Something should be uh, noteworthy. It, Chilean companies uh, saved uh, more than 27 billion pesos in eight years by adopting sustainable practices. And this has been quantified uh, by the valuing of negative, uh, ne uh, negative externalities which were avoided. Uh, and, uh, and all this is part of the Clean Production Agreement uh, report by the, and, this, and the Sustainability and Climate Change Agency by Corfo. Uh, thinking of uh, adding value 
like you said, Macadena, this long-term value adding, Rene, I have a question on, on what adaptation measures to climate change are working with communities, for instance, in order to increase, to enhance this uh, concept of a shared value, which I believe one of the big challenges we see for the various uh, industries. As we said, there are, uh, this is uh, multifaceted uh, challenges. Adaptation, as Claudia says, has to do with the uh, water scarcity. Uh, we, our operations are in central Chile, where we have a, a shortage of water. So we have, uh, we're trying to recirculate in Anglo American, we're recirculating 80% of the water we use. Um, we are growing into, into supplying that uh, portion that, uh, that uh, is not being recirculated using industrial water that will not compete with human consumption. We are assessing some long-term uh, options that uh, using 100% uh, using uh, industrial water in the near future so as to av av avoid competing with potable drinking water. We have a water management uh, strategy, not only with communities, but other stakeholders, and trying to find how we can make management, the use and access to drinking water is uh, improved uh, in a way that will allow us to work together with other stakeholders. Aguas Andinas, for instance, we're working at the Maipo River, uh, trying to, uh, uh, this is a multi-industry, multi uh, multi-stakeholder in order to improve the information on the basing and the water management. We're working with our communities with methodologies and telemetry in terms of more efficient use of APRs, rural APRs, that uh, we've intervened over 50 APRs, which has allowed that the flow and supply of water is uh, uh, permanent. I mean, they don't have uh, interruption. There's no management problems that uh, hinder the the regular supply of water. We are basically adding telemetry. We're uh, favoring uh, over 100,000 people in rural areas uh, around uh, our operations in the rural uh, in the agua rural program. Maybe other companies, and, and like I said before, in some sort of alliance, we can see together how these innovations we have developed together with other companies can uh, maybe may extend to uh, the rest of the population. We've been trying to introduce a better management of water in the, uh, uh, the water discussion groups with communities, so as to make this into a common collaboration approach. We don't, this is, this is not a conflict to be solved, but how do we join together and, and, and turn these into a common solution? I believe that different way of approaching by building leadership among communities, which is a big effort we make there, has allowed us to uh, grow into a, into a constructive uh, dialogue uh, a rationale of to face a, a problem that, that, that will be uh, with us uh, probably in a more severe way. Great, thank you. Oh, thank you, Rene. Now, I, I have a question here from the audience uh, which we received so that we can... Uh, uh, th those are the questions I like because in a way, this is not only our concerns, but uh, those uh, that are listening uh, they start to interact and send questions uh, to this uh, uh, chat box. Question is how today this uh, climate emergency has really permeated the agenda of the boardroom. The question is what topics are you dis uh, do, do you see that has to be added starting 2022, which were not in the agenda of the boardroom before uh, uh, before uh, 2020. Uh, how, how do you see that new uh, boardroom agenda and what are those changes? Who would like to, who has uh, the, the annual agenda uh, already in place and uh, adding uh, non-financial issues? Let me, let me discuss uh, our, our case. Uh, clearly, 
and uh, the boardroom, we review on a monthly basis the evolution of uh, the goals, uh, the sustainability and environmental goals we have set. We do a um, monitoring at the board level, but also we have a sustainability committee uh, to work on uh, on on these and and, and review these uh, goals. This sustainability committee, uh, the membership is uh, board members, uh, the sustainability manager and corporate affairs, the environment manager, and some uh, senior uh, uh, executives, uh, and they meet uh, on a monthly basis to review all these goals we've uh, set. In every uh, board meeting, uh, we, uh, the, the corporate affairs and sustainability manager at, uh, attends. So uh, this is an uh, ever-present uh, topic. We have added topics uh, such as the reduction of emissions uh, uh, in terms of specific tons of CO2, CO2 equivalent, and, uh, and we have uh, goals in specific water consumption goals for, for the company, use of water in different operations, and uh, we have very demanding uh, goals by 20 to 23 to reduce the use of, uh, of landfills. We will no longer use these uh, landfills, and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, frequent measuring, uh, frequent monitoring, as well as improving preservation. We have uh, a goal of 100,000 hectares of uh, conservation uh, by 2030. Uh, so we do the follow-up and, and, and the monitoring as how uh, how this is uh, how this is uh, uh, progressing. Those are four topics which are very specific over and above on the environmental management of the different operations. Historically, which were not reviewed, which are now being reviewed. Uh, uh, we're very much involved. Who else? What other metrics are including in those uh, boardroom agendas? What KPIs, what new topics are being added to your agendas in the boardroom? Paolo, you have to turn your mic on. I can share with you, I mean, confirm what, what Francisco was saying. That is, we, our uh, board, is uh, very much involved in sustainability. In a monthly meeting we have, we always have an update of, um, from, from sustainability manager on all these uh, most important topics. We have a sustainability plan together with the, uh, com the corporate development plan. It's extremely connected. Clearly, in this uh, meeting, uh, this board meeting, we discuss uh, uh, environment, climate change, but uh, uh, human rights, diversity, health care, uh, safety, relationship with the authorities where we have assets. So clearly, this is a topic also at a committee level. level. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a sustainability committee addressing this topic, meeting every month, I clearly uh, look at the evolution of uh, the company and, and, and how this company is being measured uh, with all the sustainability rankings where we are involved. To give you an, an example, uh, we clearly we've been pushing for decarbonization, non-renewables, -renewable, uh, in a sort of reduction of direct emission of CO2 by reducing by uh, between 2017 and 2023 by 64%, uh, less than 100 grams of CO2 equivalent. So that clearly means uh, reaching 2023 with 77% of uh, capacity without emissions with the today, which is around 60-70% uh, without emissions, to reach nearly 90%. Those are indices uh, that are, are part of the industrial plan and the sustainability plan, which uh, at the sustainability uh, uh, committee, we measure and update, and then we take to the boardroom. 
a fatwa. May, may I, I, I fully agree with Francisco and Paolo. Uh, maybe let me add a, a dimension on how the, the board of directors work. The role of the chairperson is to build the agenda, to so say what to discuss in the boardroom. And if I review the Awas and Dina's agenda of the last two years, none of them did not include uh, climate change. So uh, that is, every month uh, during the last two years, we've added climate change as part of our agenda. In fact, I lead uh, the sustainability committee. I mean, we have a formal, besides our, our board meeting, we, with the high frequency, we meet to discuss sustainability in the company. And uh, yesterday, we had the, the, the board meeting of uh, Agua Santina and, uh, and, and passed the integrated report. And this means, traditionally, companies we used to have these uh, financial reports. We decided to eliminate the financial report, and we now have uh, an integrated report. And besides financial, which is also important, we're now adding the environmental dimension, social dimension, and corporate governance damage. So I believe these things are happening in Chilean businesses, companies. We have had uh, corporate governance uh, uh, at a corporate governance levels uh, because we, we know that uh, the climate change issues are highly relevant for the development of our economy. Claudio, along the same lines, this trend of um, uh, with, with has to do with emissions and not only going from going to integrated uh, report, but thinking of uh, the emission uh, trend. Uh, do you believe the emission trend is compatible with the national goal we have today in place? I believe that uh, this is a big challenge, but uh, is absolutely doable. And I believe this is the time, this is the opportunity we have. As, as a, let me, again, let me go to things we're doing at Agua Sandinas. And, and let me, let me, I, I'm, I'm very proud uh, because I believe it contributes to the debate. We, there was the first water company in the world in publicly committing uh, to the 1.5 degrees reduction by the U, by UN. We publicly said, stated and we will change we are already in the process we will continue to change our business model so as to be compatible with carbon neutrality that means in actuality 76,150 tons of co2 per year that we will be eliminating it's hard to size that but in, in it, it means uh, 13 million trips of cars uh, less that Aguas Andinas will be reducing. And this is possible, this is doable. Uh, of course, this is a huge challenge, but, and this has been said by everyone else in the, in the panel, through decarbonization, uh, trans uh, circular economy transformation, this is doable, and we, this the, the part this is part of the role of the board. Uh, we are demanding measurement uh, 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 monthly reporting to see how we are growing into achieving the goal. I believe it as as we do it with financial management, where we will look at profits and EBIT uh, profit. Uh, the same is to be done by the board room for our circular models. And look, let me close by saying, I w what I'm learning here is that this will encourage teams. Uh, the, the company uh, teams are, are, are really encouraged. They see that it is possible to reinvent uh, the way we do things. This is the value companies have. We are here to reinvent ourselves. And, and climate change opens up a huge opportunity to show that this is fully compatible. I mean, facing climate change and business and economic development of a society. I'd like to supplement a bit what Claudio said. Um, I fully agree with Claudio in the sense that, uh, of course, uh, I fully trust that emissions reductions will be achieved. And that motivation that Claudio mentioned, 
uh, is uh, very much installed and uh, uh, the challenge to innovation is huge for companies, but you can do it. Um, but uh, but I wanted to warn everybody about what I said at the beginning, uh, that as but since the emissions goal is challenging, but uh, we need to emphasize on capturing. Uh, there's a uh, CONAF and World Bank report that there are about 2.6 million hectares today that have some uh, degree of erosion in in the country. And if you think of what was burned back in 2017, that mega fire that uh, we have, uh, there were import, important levels of erosion that were caused or problems that where you can do a lot of sequestration. Uh, so there's a significant supplement. The government uh, recognized, uh, or we committed uh, uh, 200,000 uh, hectares of afforestation in COP25. There are possibilities of growing. And the problem we have today is that uh, the level of sequestration globally uh, is low. Very there's very limited sequestration uh, in, in the forest areas that they can be uh, planted, uh, allowing to reduce erosion, improving these levels, improving uh, water capacity. So plantations, there's a lot of criticism that uh, plantations uh, uh, consume too much water, but it's confirmed uh, from UNESCO that uh, these plantations uh, help uh, recirculate uh, water uh, and uh, also tapping into the water table. I believe th th there are huge opportunities in uh, because this will help uh, uh, achieving the goal. But I also believe uh, that is fundamental to set up uh, incentives uh, because this this is something we all have to do uh, restoring uh, ecosystem uh, uh, restoring biodiversity needs everybody's effort uh, everywhere in the country uh, i believe uh, the payment uh, for these ecosystemic services in chile needs to be developed uh, so that there, there are incentives now besides uh, the, the main industries or companies uh, so that every, everyone is uh, willing to lower uh, these levels and um, achieve these improvements. Uh, I wanted to mention this because it's expensive, because when goals are set, uh, we need to find out how they're paid and where, and I believe this is a country challenge and also a challenge to companies in order to come up with uh, proposals uh, along those lines. Macarena, I'd like to ask you, because maybe there are two things that um, I'd like to connect. First, uh, what is EY's commitment with uh, carbon neutrality? Because in general, we see the commitment coming from industrial sectors, but to be able to understand how EY is committing to that goal as well. Yes, I, I was quiet because I believe from the service side of the industry is a little bit different. And, and honestly, it's easier, of course. Um, at EY, what we've been doing uh, for for the last 12 years, we've been measuring our emissions. Our commitment that was announced uh, January last year was to become carbon neutral. We announced that uh, in the World Economic Forum and we uh, were able to do it. This year we launched, uh, we have a new ambition. Uh, this ambition is uh, to become carbon negative and net zero by 2025. But for us, uh, being uh, carbon negative at EY means uh, setting uh, a science-based goal in order to reduce emissions, uh, such as uh, investing on nature-based uh, solutions and carbon-based technologies in order to compensate and eliminate carbon. And we will have reached net zero when we were, when we are able to reduce our emissions by 40% uh, uh, and in, in all aspects, uh, getting rid of our residual emissions uh, into the atmosphere through the use of uh, carbon uh, sequestration, uh, carbon elimination uh, technologies. And when we have uh, reached uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius, uh, according to the uh, Paris Agreement, uh, EY emissions are not that high, but it's still important that uh, and because of the same reason, because we are in the service uh, industry, but we are convinced that it's still important that in all sectors, uh, we should do whatever is possible in order to minimize our negative impacts. Our, our biggest impact at, in EY 
beyond becoming carbon negative or net zero, uh, given our low emissions, uh, is, will not have such a huge impact. But we believe our biggest commitment, our biggest collaboration, if you wish, it's truly uh, to work with others and help our customers in the decarbonization process and in the process of uh, creating value based on sustainability. At any rate, we are investing uh, globally and each EY office in the world has to submit a plan in order to adhere to the global goals. What does the uh, adherence plans include? How are we going to uh, increase technology in order to connect with uh, our customers? We need to improve uh, equipment and hardware and software that are more environmentally friendly we must uh, we, we must come up with a reduction in terms of business trips plans we need to reduce uh, energy use in offices uh, we have a plan of being of being uh, of being buyers of clean services and products so we are focusing on those suppliers that uh, foster their own uh, emissions reductions and that's great because as some suppliers that were not uh, running on that path and start realizing that companies such as ours and others are uh, choosing to work with cleaner producers and suppliers um, and, and we are able to do it we are investing on projects that reduce uh, GHG emissions uh, or eliminate uh, uh, carbon from the atmosphere. We have had uh, significant uh, projects with plantations. Uh, we buy carbon credits in order to uh, offset our uh, carbon footprint. What I'm going to say is going to make Paolo very happy. This, this project this year to precisely buy uh, a percentage of clean energy from Enel Generacion. We are changing all our LED uh, lighting equipment. Uh, we have a plan to reduce uh, traveling expenses. It's this last year has been great. Last year, 2020 has been great in that regard. We were able to reduce uh, our expenses on travel by 96%. Uh, uh, but uh, in 2020, uh, uh, was a very a very atypical year. Um, uh, reducing uh, expenses by three hundred seventy thousand dollars a year, and that is going to be a reduction of thirty five percent for what we even call fiscal year twenty twenty five, which is the second half of twenty twenty four and first half of uh, twenty five. That is our collaboration, or that's our plan. Thank you, Macarena. And Macarena talk, talked about mitigation, uh, but I, I believe the mining industry uh, gets the hits all the time. But I'd like to know, how are you mitigating uh, these emissions uh, uh, nationwide? What is Anglo doing? First, uh, we have a very ambitious goal as a company by 2040. We want to be carbon neutral globally. But in Chile, we want to be even more ambitious than that. And we are thinking of setting a commitment, and we'll do it uh, very soon, before the end of the decade in our Chilean operations, uh, particularly at uh, Los Bronces, which is our largest, uh, to become uh, carbon neutral. We've taken significant steps. As of January 1st, uh, we have a contract uh, from, uh, from uh, electric power supply that uh, covers all our needs in our operations in Chile, a contract with Enel of renewable energy specifically, we reduced uh, all emissions uh, uh, substantially. Uh, just to give you a figure that allows us to reduce uh, emissions uh, Mm, of a number of cars uh, compared to the uh, number of cars that are sold every year in Chile. All those emissions of the cars that are sold in a year in Chile are reduced by the kind of contract we've just signed with Enel in terms of power suppliers of January this year. But we have something pending, which is at the direct emissions, uh, scope one emissions. Uh, those are the ones that are, happen within uh, our sites, uh, particularly transportation or large uh, haul trucks and uh, movements inside our sites. And we are uh, embarking 
on a significant uh, project with a partner on technology, as Claudio said, uh, uh, you need conviction, uh, so to speak, uh, that has to do with the cultural uh, shift that Claudio mentioned. It is not it, it is not supposed to be only an imposition. This needs to be a different way in which you view business. Uh, and that, I believe, is a radical change in our own business culture. Uh, as you know, we are researching with the South African uh, entities and hydrogen fueled uh, whole truck. Uh, and it's been quite successful. And we hope um, to be able to tap into that very soon and to apply it uh, to other operations. In, for example, Chile. That is going to be one of the levers that will be available to also reduce uh, direct emissions and being able to make progress in our uh, carbon neutrality uh, uh, objective as a mining operation. Uh, with the biggest ambition, thinking of 2040. Uh, and also, uh, in terms of mitigation, I would say uh, another interesting, another uh, technological innovation. You know, uh, tailing storage facilities, the one we have in Colina, uh, which, which is a, a very large uh, surface area, which is exposed uh, to significant solar radiation, and thinking of how to avoid evaporation and, and the development and creativity meant that together with actually setting up an island that would prevent evaporation, on that surface, we set up solar panels allowing to generate the first floating uh, PV plant in the world. And uh, we are really happy with the success we've achieved. And uh, I believe it's also part of uh, some future options. We do not want to compete with NL, of course. Don't be scared, of course. Uh, but we also think uh, these are initiatives that um, come from our own workers. If our own workers see that the company is actually making an effort to uh, make progress in topics that are important to everyone, and that is our aim, I believe uh, things are much easier and we can come up with new ideas and innovative ideas in this, uh, in this uh, respect. Paolo, in your sector, what are the challenges that are coming uh, for the uh, coming years? Um, well, cl clearly, the challenge is to uh, achieve the goals uh, that we have set uh, to keep on uh, developing uh, a more efficient uh, energy mix, uh, zero emissions, and to reach the customer with a sustainable uh, product that also changes people's lives, improves people's lives. This means investments, innovation. Clearly, I think uh, that companies, the industry, and I think even other industries are ready to make these investments and to use innovation as one of the levers uh, to improve, as one of the drivers to uh, achieve a more sustainable business. But I also think that all of this needs to be coupled with with uh, a development, re regulatory development and support uh, that uh, creates a framework within which the company can invest, can uh, develop uh, their plan, because sometimes we have seen that um, uh, we, we may have objectives and we may have the enthusiasm of digitizing and transmission and network uh, uh, we need to. We have the will to uh, increase the capacity in terms of renewables, but sometimes uh, there are some elements uh, that uh, become obstacles to this process, or, or that limit the investment capability or innovation or transformation. That needs to be done jointly uh, between the company. Uh, uh, the people and the, uh, the authorities that this is a country plan. Uh, everything is being m mobilized. Uh, this this is an important uh, uh, objective for Chile. It, uh, it has all the tools and the possibilities of uh, d d developing uh, the possibility of developing uh, green hydrogen initiatives in order to keep reducing the level of emissions in the country. Of course. Uh, uh, this is a very long term uh, bet, uh, five, 10 years, I would say 10 years in order to achieve uh, a green hydrogen uh, 
context which can be a sustainable expense for the company. Of course, and for that, you need to uh, drive the investment uh, to electrify the system and to improve all aspects in order to uh, um, uh, to contribute uh, to uh, fighting climate change. This is something that the energy industry can do, uh, but we need to do it jointly with other sectors. It is important, and this is uh, this is a joint effort by companies and also in thinking of the long term uh, of the, the regulatory framework that is uh, that supports each sector that is uh, very important in order to share a goal that is that is a long term uh, goal uh, we can uh, we can survive with short term uh, measures or capabilities but that but that limits our capability that is needs to be discussed in different contexts uh, i'd like to hear also uh, from the other speakers because this is something that i believe is important Anybody else would like to supplement, uh, Francisco? What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing in your sector? I agree with what Paolo says so regarding uh, connection. I believe it's fundamental uh, that these things need to be worked uh, uh, in all sectors, in all industries. Uh, I would say that we are working uh, in terms of waste management. Uh, we're working with other companies. Uh, that uh, reuse a part of our waste instead of sending it to landfills. Uh, this is waste that can be used in order to uh, manufacture construction materials that, that come from sludges that are produced in the pulp industry. Uh, we're also working with other, uh, with the farming sector, with the agriculture sector. We uh, produce uh, ash and those are used in order to improve the uh, soil properties. Um, that is to say for uh, we, we have a number of initiatives in that field that have to do with <clears throat> uh, our goal in terms of not sending this waste uh, to uh, landfills uh, by 2023. I believe uh, I would just reinforce what I said before. We have uh, a very specific challenge in terms of reducing our emissions uh, with very specific projects uh, for the coming years and the different facilities we have. Uh, paper and pulp uh, facilities we have. We have a, a plan of producing 2.4 million tons of uh, CO2 equivalent. Uh, the baseline was 2018 to reach a half of that by 2030, but we hope we are able to actually hasten that. That means uh, making uh, investing on boilers and uh, furnaces and facilities we have here in Chile and Brazil, that's our priority which is also uh, a priority for us is the water issue. We have a uh, proposal of reducing our water consumption by 25% in the next uh, three or four years. That means also uh, improving our processes. We, uh, I think we have a, a dedicated plan uh, to increase our conservation efforts. Uh, this is a very challenging uh, goal because it's not uh, cheap and we need to uh, introduce also a number of uh, hectares into those plants so that uh, uh, they are able to, uh, uh, able to help us achieve the climate change goals. Uh, we're also working, uh, we're working with universities and with scientists in terms of um, uh, innovation and development uh, efforts that the country is also conducting. This is part of our main priorities in, uh, in terms of sustainability and, and climate change. There's a question. I'd like to Talking about transformation, and, and I'd like to emphasize on the role of the members of the board. When you think about these challenges, uh, I think the board of directors um, can play a role in this cultural change, in this change of vision. And let me tell you a very practical example. Tr traditionally, a water company, uh, water utility was understood as a company that treated waste in the past. Uh, 
uh, we were able to change. Uh, uh, actually, we stopped calling them sewage water treatment plant. Uh, we call them biofactories. What is a biofactory? Uh, turns waste into useful elements for society. And when I was telling you that we are treating, we are transforming 100% of sewage water from Santiago, this translates into things such as today, we are fertilizing 5,000 hectares of farming land with organic fertilizers in region six and in the metropolitan region, or we are providing, we're supplying natural gas to 30,000 uh, households in my Maipú district, or something much more important for people. We are getting rid of bad odors from the city, or, and excuse me for this, um, uh, uh, or we are causing people to be able to uh, eat lettuce with no fear. Uh, in Remember, many years ago, we were not able to eat uh, lettuce. Um, that is because uh, we knew about the negative impact uh, of using sewage water, discharge into water streams, and then used for farming irrigation. But that's what I mean, reinforcing and opening up to innovation, transforming and to having a, a, a different look of our companies. I believe that is the key uh, so that uh, we can uh, develop all the transformation uh, measures to turn it into an actual agenda. Now to a question from the audience. Uh, you are coming from big corporations, and uh, this is part of your agenda, what's uh, happening at the governance level, where you see that uh, there is a greater need for dissemination, investors' expectations. But what do you believe are the main challenges you have, uh, thinking that the boardroom has to address new topics on, on sustainability, and uh, not only in in, 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 in enlisted uh, companies, but also thinking of smaller companies or closed companies or non-listed. So what is the big task, do you believe, it's a relevant tour? What's the challenge today? I would say that uh, a challenge we have has to do with uh, uh, interconnection. We have a uh, the challenge of how to connect bigger companies, bigger businesses with smaller businesses. We, we do that, but I believe this is a task of us all. So uh, how, to, how to align, how to become properly aligned behind a common goal. Of course, as, as a challenge in itself, we've been talking about this, the commitment uh, with climate change, I believe it's key. Key because Companies, I, I believe we have a we have a responsibility with society. Climate change actually will have an impact on poverty, drought, opportunities. So uh, it is clear this is this is this is a critical, challenging topic, and I believe that uh, as what we have said, we all have the, the, the there are challenges of a, like Paolo said, uh, 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 work of uh, association with uh, governments, NGOs. Uh, not be afraid of facing this. I, we, all, we all have problems, we all have opportunities, and nobody's perfect here. And uh, uh, put uh, challenges uh, on a discussion table, approach someone for help. I believe it's a key attitude, and the boardroom should be behind this effort. May I? Let me add that uh, what we'll be discussing here, uh, value chains, uh, how do we improve that? How do we really make uh, a value chain with me meeting with the sustainability uh, goals? Uh, there are opportunity in, in, in small uh, companies, but in bigger companies, you have to find them. Circular economy, which is another concept, has, that has to be a reality. We have to recirculate or, or, or dispose of a mining tire. So a small company in, in Viña del Mar is doing pyrolysis in Chile. We're making the effort of linking a big mining operation such as uh, Anglo-American uh, with a small, very small plant, even outside of Santiago, that will do the pyrolysis of those tires. I believe there are opportunities. Uh, probably 
we need a, a more pro we have to be more proactive in trying to find uh, a, 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 how to build uh, uh, value chains uh, with sustainability or, or circular economy rationale with a clear view a clear path in order to improve and building uh, uh, a value change which will be eventually demanded by the market Macarena I have a question for you. I believe this is for you because of the type of question in tax issues. How do you think you can encourage sustainability practices? Uh, in terms of tax, it is key. Uh, private expenses uh, in, in, in uh, R and D uh, in Chile a tax is being uh, levied on new cars, uh, green tax and emissions, uh, according to OECD, this should be uh, bigger, higher. But uh, the IRS uh, considered as a necessary expenses those uh, incurred in the blue certification, the clean uh, production agreement between Corfo and Fundacion Chile, which aims at strengthening the, the water management uh, among companies. There are other incentives, such as uh, uh, subsidies and, and tax uh, in, in, in buying a green cars, for instance, or green vehicles, uh, uh, tax deductions and subsidies when you make an investment in uh, in renewable, non-conventional energy and tax uh, subsidy, tax deductions on, on, or subsidies when you're improving the uh, energy management in, in buildings or, or offices. In Denmark, for instance, there is a subsidy based on saved energy in each project. This is really interesting. This is uh, through open bits, uh, open to all companies and industries. Where, uh, where you compete for who can submit the project saving more energy. And in Canada, for instance, there is a fund uh, for strengthening the R&D on uh, clean energy. So regardless, and we have certain, certain things here, such as the incentive of uh, R&D here in Chile, uh, the tax on new cars is a green uh, taxes and this uh, acknowledgement of necessary expenses I believe we can still learn more and maybe consider some uh, uh, tax uh, deductions and subsidies in order to promote certain behaviors and also considering these type of things in, in Denmark such as this bit uh, setting setting a uh, uh, base baselines for energy use uh, and then uh, and then uh, award those who are using clean energies or using less energy. It's a specific uh, uh, R&D fund uh, for energy. Each one of you will have 30 seconds. Uh, 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 as this is every, do, every, every, every day we see this uh, advertising in, 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 in TV now. 30 seconds for closing remarks. Challenges uh, uh, the, 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 this year and the role of uh, the... Uh, a board member. Claudio. Thank you, Fadwa. Couple of ideas. Uh, first, transformation is possible. It's doable. We have a room for reinvention and, 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 and innovation. It is doable. So the role of the boardroom, it's key for this. And the second idea is responsibility as a company. I'm fully convinced that is society properly managing environmental challenges, climate challenges, uh, means uh, being very active in this transformation, active in this role. Thank you. René, uh, rather than challenges, I see opportunities, opportunities of combining uh, technology transformation, the digital revolution today, how do we add that in a compatible way, uh, becoming a pillar as strong as sustainability. I believe there is a, uh, communicating vessels. The way business do, uh, the, the way businesses uh, work, we are working 
way different to, 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 to the way we were working a year ago, and probably next year we will be changing the way we do things, uh, given these uh, changes around the world and the adaptation and the resilience we need in order to face them as a business. Paolo, first of all, let me note that the, this is a big challenge, uh, but uh, a positive side is people. People, people are very enthusiastic. In this panel, for instance, each one of you ex expresses its activity, task, attitude, goal. We're very enthusiastic. Th this is a sign that every company is going in that direction. So that's a very powerful sign. Responsibility, the responsibility of each company, big corporations. I mean, back to the previous question, how can you uh, reach smaller businesses culturally by introducing parameters. Also with vendors, uh, could be sustainable, uh, a circular uh, economy. I mean, that's a responsibility to disseminate these concepts uh, as much as possible. Macarena. Thank you, Fadua. Something that I believe uh, we should uh, see is uh, is uh, trying to be as transparent as possible with the situation of companies around a CO, a CO2 uh, emission. Because companies uh, have to be measured, can com should compare themselves, uh, at least at the bigger uh, the give, given size. Maybe there would be a carbon emission mandatory report. This would increase transparency along with along with uh, being very uh, strict on the application of uh, penalties uh, for companies uh, breaching these uh, uh, environmental regulations. Transparency and uh, respect for the law. Francisco, I have a couple of ideas. Uh, climate change is something that matters uh, to people and matters to people working in businesses. If we want to have uh, good professionals into the future, we have to be, uh, people want want to be in a place working for society, working for improving these problem we have. Second is that uh, invite uh, uh, companies uh, to set goals, so ask companies to set goals. Not all of them have them uh, working on sustainability, but set. let's set specific goals uh, based on science. Uh, science, and that could be uh, a, a goal exceeding the local, uh, local uh, legislation or, 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 or in reinfo and also reinforcing what Macadena says measurement uh, metrics and standards it's not it's not just chile or, or for a particular industry or for my particular company these means joining global measuring uh, agreements uh, and that goes along with uh, transparency and playing a, a a role setting a path in the climate change uh, challenge thank you i would like to Thank on behalf of EY, the Institute of Directors. I would like to thank on behalf of the Santiago Stock Exchange your participation in our first uh, meeting on the Chapter Zero Chile with Claudio, who is the chairperson. Uh, we will be working on different initiatives uh, related to how the board is committed to have uh, an agenda. And there are several things, investment, approaches, circular economy, infrastructure, purpose, uh, sustainability uh, committee. So many of them will be addressed uh, throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you once again for the opportunity. And uh, let's continue to promote these uh, best practices in the environment in our companies. Thank you.